to the Franklin County Board of Commissioners General Session uh, for February 28th, 2023. Um, for those of you uh, that are calling in by uh, phone uh, or participating by phone, please remember to uh, mute your line and because with, be, as a reminder, it's a public meeting. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we will begin this morning's meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance led by <laughs> Commissioner Boyce. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, so our final guest this morning for our Black History Month is uh, Executive Director of Kelton House Museum and Gardens, Sarah Reichert. Uh, anyone, for anyone that's unfamiliar, the Kelton House sits just east of the main library. It was once a part of the Underground Railroad. Earlier this month, Ms. Reichert spoke at length uh, at one of the county's lunch and learn sessions sharing the story of Rosetta Armstead's fight for freedom. Ms. Armstead's struggle for freedom lasted years as she arrived in the North. <coughs> Thankfully, she had an impressive team of men in Central Ohio helping her including uh, a future U.S. president. Her story has gained a lot of interest, and it should, uh, and as it should, and Ms. Armstead's fight should not be forgotten. Here to tell us more about Ms. Armstead's plight is Ms. Reichert. Uh, Ms. Reichert, if you would like to step to the microphone. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Kelton House as well, because I'm, I'm not sure if anybody, if everybody has been there. I'm hoping most most of you have been there already. Um, but if you haven't been there recently, it's it's time to go back. But my name is Sarah. I've been at the Kelton House for three years now, and this is my second Underground Railroad site that I work at. I used to work at in the Chicago area for about 15 years in an Underground Railroad site, and now um, so my expertise is in uh, the anti-slavery movement and the abolitionists and um, and the freedom seekers that I talk about. We're the only Underground Railroad site uh, operated in Franklin County with public hours, and we host, we host over 10,000 visitors per year. Our visitors come from all over the world. We also educate uh, between three and 5,000 students per year, and these students come from public and private schools as well as homeschooled children. We opened the Underground Railroad Learning Station in 2002 with the help of local historians, community members, educators, and the Junior League members who, uh, who operate the museum. The reason we know that we are part of the Underground Railroad is because of a girl named Martha. Um, we talk about the Keltons, uh, but we're not a Kelton Museum. Our stories go beyond the four walls of 586 East Town Street, and two of these stories are, are about two young freedom seekers that are here uh, that came through Columbus. And first of all, Martha. Martha was a young enslaved girl in Virginia who, with her sister Pearl, escaped from a plantation in Virginia. She was 10 years old, Pearl was 14, and they arrived in Columbus and found themselves seeking safe harbor and they ended up at 586 East Town Street. The Keltons found them in their backyard, Sophia and Fernando, and they brought them into their home. Pearl soon left and she went uh, farther north and we assumed she was heading towards Canada. She ended up in Wisconsin. Martha stayed with the Keltons, she was only 10 and she was ill when she got here. And she not only stayed as a 10 year old child, she stayed and she stayed and she stayed. And eventually she became an adult at the Kelton home. She lived in the front of the house with the Kelton's daughter, Ella. And she eventually met one of the staff members at the Kelton house and married there. She was married um, by the Reverend James Poindexter who presided over the ceremony in the front parlor of the Kelton house. Martha and her husband Thomas eventually moved from the home and they moved eventually to 17th Street across the street from the rest of the Kelton children once they had moved out. They all moved together towards uh, Monroe and 17th Street here in Columbus. Martha and her husband, the freedom seeker who is this 10 year old girl who makes it here to Columbus, makes it to the Kelton home. Um, she marries uh, this gentleman named Thomas. They have two children, they name one after Ella Kelton. They named their son Arthur Kelton Lawrence after their, the son Arthur Kelton. Arthur Kelton Lawrence, their son, was the first African American to graduate from Ohio State Medical School. One generation from slavery. Now he's a doctor here in Columbus and he practiced um, on Long Street until 1954 at his death. 
But Martha wasn't the only girl that was here, and she wasn't the only one in Columbus that was seeking freedom. I started researching uh, Rosetta Armistead about three years ago, and I found a little tiny snippet of information. When you put about 100 little tiny snippets together it, from 1855, uh, Rosetta Armistead's story comes together in an amazing way. She was born in 1839, Rosetta was, on a plantation called Sherwood Forest. It's such a lovely place, unless you're a slave living on John, President John Tyler's property. She was born there, she was enslaved there with 400 other slaves that John Ty President John Tyler owned. Her parents lived there, her, her siblings lived there, and they all lived together on this plantation. Well, she was, the horror of her life was in 1853, she was given as a wedding present to John Tyler's daughter. So John Tyler gave a human being to his daughter Alice as a wedding present. Alice so soon moved to Louisville, Kentucky, and when she moved to Louisville, she had a baby, Alice, uh, Alice Tyler did, Alice Tyler Dennison. Alice Tyler Dennison has this baby. Now she needs somebody to help raise this baby, and that's Rosetta's job. She starts doing this as a 14-year-old and raising this baby. Soon Alice Tyler Dennison passes away, and now Rosetta is the only one raising this baby. The baby is eventually sent back to Virginia, uh, back to live with her grandparents, and then they need to send Rosetta back to take care of the baby. So a series of events happened with Rosetta and she ends up in Columbus, Ohio. She's brought here by her owner. She's brought to Ohio, which is a very important point because in 1842, Ohio passed a really important law that said if a, an enslaved person is brought to Ohio after 1842, they're brought here by their owner, they're automatically free. No ifs, ands, or buts. So they are free via Ohio state law. Now that is not necessarily federal law, but that's state law. So Rosetta's brought here to Ohio by her owner, and she gets here, and she's coming in on the train, and some guy happens to be on the train, and that some guy was a guy named William, William Ferguson. Now William Ferguson was one of the founders of the, 17, or of the, the Second Baptist Church, and eventually was the founder of the Af the African Anti-Slavery Baptist Church that was on Town Street. So this African-American man who was a pastor and a leader in the community here in Columbus happens to be on the train with Rosetta Armistead and taps her on the shoulder as they're pulling into Columbus and says, you know you're free here. Well, she probably knew she was free. From all accounts, she was a really intelligent woman. She's 16 years old. I'm sure some of you in here are 16 years old. She was 16 years old and her life completely changed just by him tapping her on the shoulder. So they pull into the station. William Ferguson has her followed and goes to Sam Galloway, our state con or our, our congressman at the time. Sam Galloway, friend of President Lincoln's, friend of Senator Lincoln's. He was a, um, a leader in the community. And William Ferguson goes to Sam Galloway and says, she needs an attorney. So they go to court. They file a writ of habeas corpus. They show up at court on Monday morning with Rosetta. There's a whole lot of things in between. You'll have to come back to the Kelton House to find out the rest. <laughs> but she comes to, um, they, they gather her on Monday morning. They show up at 9 a.m. to the, the courthouse. And 900 African Americans, uh, people of color in Columbus, show up as well to show the support. So by Saturday at noon when she, she arrives, and Monday morning, 900 people gathered with no internet, with no social media to gather them. They found out by word of mouth, and they all show up to support this young girl. Well, Sam Galloway is her attorney, congressman, wonderful, and she wins her freedom. Well, her owner's none too happy about this. Two weeks later, he has her kidnapped by gunpoint from Columbus and taken to Cincinnati, where she goes through two subsequent court cases. Um, now this time, she, Sam Galloway is no longer her attorney. She has two other attorneys that meet her there. One is Sam and P. Chase, who is eventually the Chief Justice of the US Supreme Court, also uh, Secretary of the Treasury, um, many things, and Chase Bank is named after him. But he's one of her attorneys, as well as Rutherford B. Hayes. So these two gentlemen meet her in Cincinnati. She goes through two other court cases, and with that, she is finally given her freedom. So. Two presidents involved in this case, multiple uh, court cases, and finally through both state and federal court, she's given her freedom. But I think the biggest 
takeaway for me in this story is how the people of Columbus, the people from the African Anti-Slavery Baptist Church guarded her. They, they kept her safe. In between court cases, they showed up in Cincinnati. Hundreds of people showed up via train to make sure she was safe and taken care of. They, show, they guarded their house at night to make sure this girl who nobody knew until she just happened to randomly come into Columbus in 1855. And um, the city gathered around her, um, regardless of race and regardless of knowing her, being a friend of hers. Um, but they were all friends at the end. Um, so there's lots more to this story. I could talk about it forever. Uh, the court aspects, the, um, the personal aspects, all of the people on Town Street that were involved on this, and there was multiple people. Um, but in the interest of time, I would uh, rather invite you all to the Kelton House and to come and hear more about Rosetta's story. And um, we're open on Thursdays through Sundays from noon to four. And you can come in then. And if the Franklin County Board of Commissioners is looking in any way to support the Kelton House, I'd be happy to speak with you in the f future. And of course, I'm going to say that because uh, <laughs> that's what I do. So, <laughs> but, Good coaching, uh, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no coaching needed. <laughs> but thank you again for inviting me here today. And and I I do have a passion for speaking about this. And Columbus is and Ohio is one of the best places to speak about this in the country. So. Well, thank you. Here in the mic. Sure. Uh, um, I had a question. So where was the train station that she, do you know where that, where that was? Sure, that was Union Station. It's where the arena district is now. There's yeah. the big arch there. That yeah, was the original. Yeah, yeah. That's, what I, yeah. Uh, that's what I was wondering. Yep, I, same I, one. I, they're thinking there or um, where, um, Spaghetti Warehouse is. Um, there was a train station uh, right sure, there, sure. Yeah, long, 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 long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in thinking. the days when you could actually take a train from Columbus to Cincinnati. Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> yeah, it was. So there was all of these people. The, I mean, the Neal House was involved in this. That was. It's right across from the courthouse. There was a doctor's mm -hmm. office um, up on the Long State Street. I mean, there were so right, many people long. involved in this, and yeah. it was all kind of gathered in this one area. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did, were you going to say something, Commissioner Crow? Oh, no, I, go ahead. You finish. Okay. I'll wait. Um, yeah. yeah, the only other thing I was going to add was I, mean, I, I love your rendition of um, Columbus history because in how it ties into American history. Absolutely. And, and the Kelton House, I haven't been in so long. So when you said that, I was like, man, I have not been in, oh, it's probably been. A while. It's been definitely since you've been here because I've not met you. So um, <laughs> I, I definitely will make a point to come back. And I hope that the uh, young people that are here uh, will take the time to come and experience that. There are great stories uh, in Central Ohio that um, really uh, contribute to what I think is a bright part of our American history around the story and the plight of African Americans and to, from where we went, where we come to where we are today. And, and this is one of them. And mm -hmm. Kelton House is a great um, illustration of that. So thank you so much for um, the history lesson today. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If I may, sure. Mr. President, um, thank you uh, for being here. Thank you for that history, as my, my colleague said. Um, you know, I think this is, I mean, your, uh, the story that you just laid out is um, a perfect example of why we need to talk about black history. Mm -hmm. Black history is American history, <laughs> um, and it's just not, um, you know, we can't just really put it in, the, in one month. We should always be talking about it. But also to your point about all the people who gathered, um, I think when we talk about black history, especially those who were enslaved, um, who were trying to gain their freedom um, along, you know, over centuries, but, you know, with the Underground Railroad and those trying to make it to the north, there were allies, and we should also be talking, as we talk, as much as we talk about our history um, and those enslaved and my ancestors, um, I think it's important to acknowledge um, the co-conspirators, right? I hate to say allies because sometimes <laughs> people say that they're allies until it's time to be an ally, so I like to say co-conspirators, those who took an action in furtherance of um, individuals trying to seek uh, their freedom. 
freedom. And so, again, thank you so much. I will be back to the Kelton House. It has been a few years um, since I was in the legislature, um, but this is a, a, a great reason to come back to hear the rest of the story. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Ms. Riker, thanks for being with us today. Appreciate you being here. Um, for, for those of you who um, may have missed uh, Ms. Riker's uh, detailed account of, uh, of uh, Rosetta uh, Armstead's uh, fight for freedom, uh, you can still watch it uh, by going to the Board of Commissioners uh, Facebook page at facebook.com slash Franklin County Board of Commissioners uh, and then scroll down to the content that was added on February 15th. Um, and then you can also see it, um, a recording of it uh, on our YouTube uh, page at youtube.com slash Franklin County, uh, Ohio Board of Commissioners 1246. So we do still have it out there. Uh, I the, more, it. the more detailed. Yes. Uh, I watched it yesterday. It was really weird to watch myself. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I avoid watching myself as often yeah. as I can as well. So, uh, but thank you for being here and sharing the story with us, uh, and, and thanks for sharing it on Lunch and Learn as well. So, thanks. we appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. All right. <clears throat> um, and you're welcome to uh, stick around with us for the rest of the meeting if you'd like, but we also know you're a very busy person, so if you need to leave, we won't be offended. <clears throat> um, so, uh, today we also have the pleasure of welcoming some of uh, Franklin County's most impressive young artists. Um, the Franklin County uh, Art Artists and Scholars Recognition Program honors high school students who are extremely um, excellent young students in academics and arts. <clears throat> 24 students from different school districts have earned this accolade. These students uh, represent a variety of mediums from studio, visual, and digital arts, as well as theater, music, and videography. This morning we're honoring 13 of those 24 award winners um, and the additional 11 students will be honored in the month of March. Uh, I'd like to welcome our partner, Tom Katzenmeyer, President and CEO of the Greater Columbus Arts Council, to the podium this morning for a few words. Thank you, Commissioners, for having us today, and I appreciate that you're honoring artists. It's very meaningful. And Sarah, the story is unbelievable. Thank you. We'll all get back to the Kelton House. Uh, I would just want to mention a few things, then we're going to take some photos, I think. Uh, first of all, we have artist royalty with us in the room today, and I know he's going to be a little bit embarrassed by me calling him out, but Richard Duarte Brown is with us. He's sitting right over there. Um, if, if you say Duarte in Columbus, everyone knows who you're talking about. He's here with the Whitehall delegation today, and last year he won the Governor's Award for the Arts. He's Run, won multiple awards from the Greater Columbus Arts Council, and he has touched literally thousands of lives of children and students through uh, art education in the city. He's very humble about it, but it's, I praise you, sir. Thank you for being with us today. Um, this is the 50th anniversary of the Greater Columbus Arts Council this year, which I, I cannot believe. I've had the privilege of running it for 10 of those uh, 50 years. And I want you to know that the public support for the art, uh, arts which you uh, provide is, is what, what's so funny? We're just laughing that we're older than the Arts Council. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I'm older than the Arts Council, too. All of right. them are. Yeah. yeah. I'm not. not. Commissioner <laughs> Most of yeah. us, this, this side of the room, whatever, this side of the day whatever, is, is older. Whatever <laughs> Anyways, the, I want the, the students and the parents and their teachers here to know how significant the county commissioner's support is for the arts. Um, we get tremendous public support from the commissioners. They have been doing it for decades. The last four years, they Stop haven't it. trusted. Stop pointing out how old, okay, how old we are. Yes, <laughs> yes. The, uh, the last four years, they've entrusted my organization with doing their arts grant making. We are honored to have that contract with you, and I think it's worked out, worked out very well. We are about to surpass your commissioners up in Cuyahoga County in terms of public support for the arts. So between the city and the county, we are definitely beyond Cincinnati now, but we're about to surpass uh, 
the cigarette tax proceeds up in Cuyahoga County. So not that I'm competitive about it, or you are either, but, <laughs> but I think that's very significant. Um, so in our 50th year, we will have record support for arts organizations and the artists in Columbus. So we will fund more than 1,000 artists in Columbus this year with supply grants, marketing grants. They need money to develop a website. We will help them out on that. Um, we will dedicate a significant public art installation in June. The date isn't set yet, but uh, just so the audience knows, there's going to be a, a piece of public art hung over the intersection of Gay and High Street. It, the artist's name is Janet Eshelman. It's, a, it's the size of a football field, and it's fish netting is the best way to describe it but you're not going to be able to miss it and you'll be able to see it from the air. It's, it's that uh, substantial. So you'll get invited, everyone will get invited to that, the public will get invited to that. The Arts Festival, I have to mention it, it's June 9th, 10th, and 11th on the bridges downtown and on both sides of the river. A free wide open event, we'll have 225 artists at that event. We're going to do, with the commissioner's support, a public art plan and study for the county and the city this year. The city's joined with them on that. I could um, go on and on about it, but we're, we're thrilled, thrilled to be able to provide this. And, I'm, and I've, I've talked to all the students uh, at the reception prior to this. I gave them all my cards. This is an incredible county to be an artist in. So even if you go away for four years to college, when you come back, this is, this is really a place to be in to practice your art. There's so many opportunities for you here. You've got my card. You can keep in touch with me. I'll help you find internships, whatever you, really whatever you want to pursue, uh, inside and outside the arts. So I hope if you don't go to college in Columbus that you will come back afterwards. That's one of my favorite things to do is convince people to come back to, to uh, Columbus and Franklin County. So with that, I think we just want to take some photos and they're going to come up and each speak to you. Yeah. So. But thank you for the support. That's, that's really, I want the public to hear that here. Well, the support's important. And, uh, you know, it started, for me anyway, it started because my wife served on mm -hmm. Tom's board. And so I had to hear it every night at home, <laughs> the, you know, how important it, it was. But, um, you know, then we, we travel. The, the three of us, uh, you know, travel around the country. Uh, some travel around the world. And, and when you, you travel uh, and, you, and you see public art uh, all over the country, you know, you come back and, and, you, and you tell Tom, hey, Tom, we need, we need to do as much as we can, we need to do more. And so we, we invest in, in art because it's important. And, and um, you know, we want, we want Franklin County to, to be uh, as significant of an arts community as, as we possibly can make it. So um, it's, a, it's a big deal. So anyway, um, so we're gonna um, recognize each of the uh, school districts separately. Um, we'll ask that the uh, school official from, or teacher, it's representing the district step forward and to the, uh, to the microphone over here where Tom is um, and tell us more about these their, their students and their art um, and then once all the students from that district are recognized uh, we'll come up here and we'll uh, uh, take photos and, um, and we'll, we'll do it that way I know there's a couple of districts where there's no school official but that's okay because I'm sure that the talented young folks can step to the microphone and tell us about themselves. Uh, we do this. Uh, we do this with athletes uh, as, as well. But you know, it's it's important that we recognize everybody. And so, uh, you know, we're we're very very confident that you guys have the ability to tell us about yourselves. Um, so we're going to start by recognizing um, a couple of uh, uh, students from uh, Canal Winchester. So I think there's somebody from uh, the district here. Uh, so if you guys want to come on up. Good morning. All right. Yeah, wherever you want. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good morning. My name is Tracy Pearson, and I am high school art teacher at Canal Winchester. I've had the pleasure of knowing these girls, excuse me, all four years of high school. Um, they kind of live in the art department. I know I see them back to back um, for two periods in a row. They are both multi-talented. I have Jalasia here and Malia here. Um, 
and just chatting with them this morning found out that um, Malia is going to go to Kent State to study fashion and um, it does not surprise me at all. She is a fashion diva girl. I love it. Um, and Jolasia is interested in illustration, wants to kind of broaden her horizons a little bit, but as a teacher of both of these young ladies, I can definitely see them striving and going beyond um, what they've done in my classroom. Um, we have, we're, we're lucky to have four art teachers at our high school, and three of the four have had both of these girls, and I've had them as freshmen to these young women they are today, and uh, I'm proud of them, proud of honoring them, and I was just chatting with the parents earlier and saying, Jolasia's my, she's very illustrative, very tight, um, she likes tentative to detail, takes her time, and then we've got Malia. She's a little messy, kind of like me. She just kind of goes for it and just pushes herself. And I love those personalities of each of them. Um, Malia is in, on the track team. They're, they're both, they do College Credit Plus classes. They are both honor students. And so inside and outside the classroom, they're amazing women. And I congratulate both of them. And I'll miss them next year as well. <laughs> Right. Uh, so next we have uh, Groveport Madison, um, and uh, we have a te an art teacher from Groveport Madison today. So Jeremy Miller. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Good morning. Um, I'm Jeremy Miller. I'm the art teacher, one of four at Groveport Madison. Um, and I've taught at several districts here in Franklin County, but I saved the best for last. So I'm really happy to be at Groveport. Um, with these two great students, I have Godfred Frimpong and Don Yeo, um, both seniors. And I've had them in the pleasure of teaching them in art foundations, and they're currently in my painting class. Um, so Donald has been a student who comes in. He'll come in almost every day at the end of the day to take stuff home to work on or get materials. Uh, very creative. Um, he also likes to write. He was journaling this morning. Um, but his artist statements are always, you know, we do a few sentences, a paragraph, but his are always, you know, double or triple that. Uh, so he's very thoughtful, very reflective about his art, uh, very talented. Um, he thinks outside the box. He'll try new things. Um, and when I had to pick two students, these are immediately who I thought of. Um, then Godfred has been in several art classes at Groveport. Um, with, we have four art teachers, so not just me. Uh, but he has been super talented. Um, he'll come in, he works on his art. Um, he puts a lot of detail into his work. So he was, he was apologizing this morning that he takes, you know, three weeks on one project. They said, never apologize for that. Our teachers love that. Um, so, you know, he spends more time and effort in his work, um, and his work really shines. Um, I appreciate both of these students. So um, they really add a lot to Groveport. These are a couple of Groveport's best students, so I'm really proud of them both.
All right. Next we have uh, the Hamilton Local School District, Caitlin Duncan, the district's uh, public uh, director of public relations. Uh, is here to tell us about uh, the winners um, and or oh yeah already up with the microphone <laughs> um, so thank you yeah so like you said I am I'm not an art teacher I am the director of public relations for our district um, our art and, art and music department asked me to be here this morning on behalf of them I'm a huge supporter of both of these departments and we have a lot of exciting things coming up as like an art festival coming up in May for both music and our arts. So I'm a huge supporter of both of these departments. And so on behalf of them, um, Mr. Lincoln Hoker actually sent me a blurb to speak about Gabby. And then I also have one for Gavin from the band director and the music director. So for Gabby, Mr. Lincoln Hoker says that she is a terrific artist, terrific artist and a wonderful student at Hamilton Township High School. She makes exceptional artworks while experimenting with different materials, <coughs> techniques, and processes, and her creativity has really come into her own this year, this year. Gabby has the ability to use realism if she chooses to. She impresses with abstract choices she makes, and other times she can make really meaningful artworks when she wants to make a statement. Each artwork she produces is unique, creative, and skillfully done. Gabby has been impressing all of us her entire career at Hamilton Township High School, and we look forward to seeing what she thinks of next. Now for Gavin, on behalf of Mrs. Shute, uh, Gavin is a smart musician with leadership skills to match his level of musical talent. He works hard and motivates others by example. He is not afraid to admit when he doesn't know something, and he seems grateful for the opportunity to learn more. We chose Gavin for these qualities and for his success in both choir and band, but also his other academics. He is the best example, and he is a well-rounded student. And then from Mr. Fulton, Gavin is a conscientious student, both inside and out of the classroom. As a musician, Gavin takes pride in his clarinet playing and is always looking for ways to improve. He also seeks out new challenges by playing uh, bass guitar in our jazz band, as a leader, Gavin dem demonstrates strong commitment to service and is always leading by example. He's an exceptional all-around student and has blossomed into an outstanding role model for our younger students. Um, as a district, we are very proud of the both of you and we can't wait to see what you guys do next. To the trumpet. I see that. I was like, that. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> we now have the uh, New Albany Plain Local School District um, with a couple more. Hello, uh, my name is Juliette Montague and I am an art educator at the New Albany <clears throat> High School. Um, and I would just say I was um, excited today to hear from the Kelton House because I was married there many years ago. Oh, so, wow. brought me back. <laughs> um, I am here um, to introduce you to Liam Otten, um, who I just met this morning. <laughs> because Liam is a musician and I'm a visual artist. So, but Liam, um, he ha plays a plethora of instruments, uh, trombone, bat, bass, and piano among them. He plays in both the jazz bands at school, he plays in the orchestra, he plays in the wind ensemble, and he also plays in the Columbus Youth Jazz Orchestra. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't even know how he has time for all his other 
uh, curricular activities, but he's also an honor student, honor roll student, and he's also an avid uh, rower, so he's on the crew, and he was just recently, was it the Healthy New Albany? Yeah. Where, yeah, he was, he was in there uh, recently. Um, so uh, both the uh, band teacher and orchestra teacher had just many wonderful things to say about Liam. As a visual art teacher, um, I'll introduce you to Demi Showstock. I've had Demi for four years in a row. I'm going to flunk her this year so I can continue to have her. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as you know, I just really appreciate you honoring the arts because uh, as a, I'm an artist and an art educator, and you know, it's the arts that tell the world the story of the world. And that's why it's so important uh, for all of us to be involved. When students, when maybe some kids come in uh, that, into a class that say, well, you know, art's not really that important. I don't know why I have to take it. I tell them, you would be naked standing out in a field somewhere. You would have no clothing. You would not have anything to sit on. And you would have no shelter because all of those things are designed. And it's people, uh, you know, uh, like Demi who are going to bring that forward. Uh, Demi has earned, her artwork is amazing. She's earned several awards, both through um, gold keys and silver keys in the Scholastic uh, Arts Competition and the Governor's Youth Arts uh, Exhibition. She's won awards. She, her work was just featured on the Thurber House Flip the Page um, uh, uh, publication this past year. So without further ado, um, uh, congratulations to both of you. And now we have the Reynoldsburg School District. Um, good morning. Uh, my name is Lorelai Dunlap. And my name is Sophie Jai. And uh, our art teacher wasn't able to make it here this morning, uh, but we really uh -huh. appreciate Ms. Murgatroyd. She's one of our biggest supporters. Um, and we appreciate uh, all that she does for us. Um, but my name is Lorelai. I am a senior art student at Reynoldsburg, and I take multiple art classes, and along with that, I also play piano, and I play the cello for my school's orchestra. <coughs> um, yeah. I am also a senior at our school, and I take multiple art classes, and I've been in Miss Murray Choice class for all three years I've been at our school. Um, Sophie and I also uh, play for our school's tennis team. And we also, right now, are in one of our classes, are helping an uh, anti-tobacco group in creating art so that we can advocate for uh, law changes f uh, regarding tobacco and like vapes and things like that. And so we've been working with that group.
next up is uh, Upper Arlington High School. Hi, my name is uh, Greta Dixon, and I'm a senior at Upper Arlington High School. Uh, none of my teachers could make it today, but I'm very happy to be here and thankful to be here. Uh, I take three art classes at UAHS. I'm in AP Drawing, uh, Honors Advanced Ceramics, and I'm in Digital Design too. I love all those classes. I love being in the arts, and I also have an art therapy club that I started this year, and I really love to get to do that and meet with everybody every week. Yeah, we should have had like a microphone and stood out there the whole time. Um, and now Whitehall, uh, the Whitehall School District. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sarah Hebdo. I am the 3D Arts and Computer Graphics teacher at Whitehall Yearling High School. Thank you for having us today and recognizing our students. Um, Samantha Jenkins Ramos is one of the art scholars, uh, but she is not here today. And I wanted to recognize her because she's uh, a really great and dedicated artist. Um, she's on the yearbook committee, and she was just accepted to Otterbein to study education. So she wants to be a teacher, not an art teacher, but a science teacher. So I've been saying, what about STEAM? I think you'd be really great at it. Um, but she's a wonderful human, and I want to congratulate her, even though she's not able to make it today. And uh, the next student is Samaya Ferguson. Samaya um, came to Whitehall in the middle of uh, last year, so I've only known her for about a year and a half. But <clears throat> what I realized immediately was Samaya has this calm and quiet and low-key demeanor, but her art is fierce. and. Um, the spirit of where her art comes from is really exceptional. Uh, Samaya just got accepted to the School of the School of the Art Institute of Chicago with a full ride tuition. <laughs> and she just got a letter from uh, from the institute saying that she had also been accepted into a highly competitive scholars program. Um, where she will be traveling to Italy, and they will also fully fund that. So oh, wow. I think that speaks volumes about who she is and um, where her future is going. So congratulations, Samaya. So the other reason why I love to do this is because, uh, you know, when I was a kid, when I was your age, I was, uh, I was just a jock, and, and uh, uh, I, was, I didn't have a creative bone in my body. I still don't. Um, and and I, was the, I was the consummate, you know, I, I, I started blooming later, and I didn't become uh, academically talented until I got a little bit older. Um, but I have four kids, and they're all creative. And they're all they're good athletes, 
um, especially my daughters. <laughs> um, but they, you know, I have I have kids that are um, that are very talented. They're very creative. Um, I have I was just I was explaining to one of the young gentlemen I have percussionists in my family, and I spent a lot of time at. at uh, um, I've spent a lot of time over the years in a lot of ball fields over, and, and a lot of ball games and every sport, but I've also spent a lot of time uh, at a lot of band performances and a lot of art and choir practice or choir uh, events and and um, and it's just it's been great uh, and it's been wonderful to support the arts in so many different ways um, and it's also been great to have children who are so academically talented <laughs> you know it's very proud parent because that wasn't me when I was a kid uh, it took a long time for me to um, uh, I, I, I didn't graduate from from college right away I went back to school as an adult uh, and when I did I did very very well uh, graduated from from school with honors but I did it as an adult um, and so I love when we celebrate young people Academically, athletically, and and from an from an arts perspective, because success, celebrating people's success is a wonderful, wonderful thing, and celebrating young people's success is fantastic, and to see the kind of talent that's in this room, and to see the kind of talent that you guys all have, and and that you guys possess, and especially the creative talent, to me is just amazing because. You know, <laughs> it may, I'm blown away by creative talent because I just absolutely possess none of it. And so to see what you guys do and the kind of things that, you know, I mean, somebody like somebody like Duarte, uh, you know, the, the, what, what he does, um, I mean, that when I walk into a museum, it just blows me away because I couldn't do that. I don't understand it. And it just is it's wonderful to see the kind of stuff that you guys do. So, congratulations to all of you. Commissioners. Do you want to go? Sure, I okay. can go. Um, so, congratulations to all of you um, and to your teachers um, and everyone who encourages you and your creativity, no matter what it looks like. I, I um, people know that if I wasn't in politics, I would be in fashion. Um, and I think um, fashion and whether it's visual arts or theater or um, musical arts, um, it's a form of self-expression. Um, and so, you know, I just applaud everyone um, who support our youth and, and their creativity. Um, as I was telling the clerk, like I um, played the clarinet and the trumpet, um, but really got into um, my great aunt, who I speak of a lot, um, introduced me to um, different forms of art. She used to uh, collect ceramic pieces um, and um, other artwork uh, that she had for for decades. Um, and if you go to my office now, uh, because this job also allows me to be in the space where I can support other artists. Um, you know, as Duart was talking, I was trying to get um, some transit art. I have pieces from the Museum of Art, and I'm looking for some um, art to put on my walls from our youth. So um, would love to display any pieces that you all might have. Um, and, you know, when I went to Brazil, I a couple weeks ago, took our art activism and action book um, that highlights um, local artists uh, who had a number of paintings um, and portraits and um, displays during the um, uprisings that were here. And when I tell you the um, public officials in Curitiba as well as in Rio, uh, that was the highlight of the visit. Um, they want to learn more about our artists here um, in Franklin County in the city of Columbus um, and have followed up on a, a number of things since then. And so, you know, your your art can go anywhere and everywhere and it will be celebrated. And so I just want to say from my perspective in being here in Franklin County, I absolutely love the fact that we continue to support GCAC, um, but then also support our, our kiddos and our students and <coughs> their creativity and authenticity. So um, keep doing with your, what you're doing. And um, for those who are graduating, um, good luck in your future endeavors. <coughs> uh, Mr. President. 
Please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, to ditto everything my colleague said, it's interesting that this half of the dais is older than GCAC <laughs> and has no fashion sense <laughs> uh, or artistic <laughs> capabilities. Uh, and that side of the room, past you, sir, yeah. um, uh, <laughs> does have all of those things. Uh, but there are two, two things I want to add to the really good points that my colleagues made. Um, the first is I'm a finance person, and I think of everything in, in the sense of finance. And uh, there is what we call the creative economy. And, and so sometimes we tend to want to box certain things to define our economy, box into certain things that define our economy, the obvious things. But I want to tell you that the creative economy is very much a big component of our ecosystem of the economy here in Central Ohio. And all of you, one way or another, contribute to that. <coughs> and you contribute to what I think is um, a, a, a new legacy of that art that's evolving right under our noses. Um, and I'm really excited about what you represent. You're kind of the, the, um, uh, the, the folks coming off the bench, if you will, and taking the lead. And that's what we look for you for. Um, I, I, like John, I don't think of myself as um, artistically talented, um, and um, I don't have any fashion sense whatsoever. I wear blue suits all the time for that reason, uh, because I just, colors and matching up is, is such a challenge to me. And so I really want you to know that you have a gift, and that gift is something that is blossoming at a pace and a level that you may not see today, but I'm, ch I'm telling you, it is as valuable as um, the greatest scientists that we rec recognize or uh, someone who, who might be in, in the hospital um, saving lives. It, you know, I, I read a statistic about a year or so ago that said that um, uh, why America, if you really peel back all the layers of statistics about how we've been able to thrive as not the largest country or uh, even the most strategically placed geographically country, but it's been our creativity that drives uh, science, that drives um, technology, uh, that really has made uh, America a great place to live, work, and raise a family. And then um, finally, um, I have a son who is in art school in uh, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and so, he clearly did not get uh, that art talent from me, but I will tell you, I've come to really appreciate uh, that gift uh, and seeing it in my own child. And so um, I just want to encourage you to explore, um, to um, uh, really just embrace those creative itches. And the, the, there was one of the teachers was saying that one, one student likes to be very detailed and think about it. The other one is very uh, immediate and reactive, you know. And I love that because really you're, you're probably both in, in many ways because I, I just see that in art. Uh, and so anyways, um, thank you for uh, being such dedicated students. I'm excited to see the future from uh, all of you. And um, we all offer internships mm -hmm. and so um, for college students. So. Um, maybe there will be an opportunity to come back. You know, look us up. I'd love to, to follow you, and I, I ask you to stay in touch, and I meant that. Uh, stay in touch, and if, if there's opportunity to intern with our office, we want to encourage you to do that. And so uh, thanks so much for um, all that you all do. Well, we thank you all for being here today. Congratulations. You have tremendously bright futures. Um, it is wonderful what you're doing. Um, and you are welcome. Welcome to stay. Learn about, <laughs> learn about Franklin County government and how we operate. But you are not beholden to stay. Um, we are going to move on with the rest of our business. We will not judge you if you ease out. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. We will not judge you. Uh, so anyway, uh, and I know some of you are anxious to get back to school. Um, so uh, you're, yeah. you're welcome to stay, but you don't have to. All right. Um, All right, we're going to move on with the. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll give uh, everybody a moment Absolutely. to clear Good out to see you. things to calm down. But okay, we'll see you, Tom. Take then care. we're going to move on with the county auditor. Thank you. Take care. 
Take care, guys. See Thanks. You now. Good luck to you. Be safe traveling. Thank you. Be safe traveling. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Yeah. See you. Thank you. Absolutely. Take Thank care. Thank you. The travel team, congratulating on making the varsity team. Wow, that's a big deal. What grade? Freshman. She's the only freshman on the team. That did surprise me. That surprised me. I have to come. I'm about to come see a game. Yeah, she's. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I want to come see a game. I was saying, her travel team congratulating her for making the varsity. Is this softball season right now? Uh, yeah. And, when, and it goes into the first, Mr. first scrimmage is on St. Patrick's Day. Okay. May I read the resolution? The, uh, all right. On with the county auditor. Resolution number 124-23. Resolution authorizing a consultant contract with Amplifier Strategic Communications for critical communication services related to the 2023 property reappraisal in the amount of $50,000. Good morning, uh, Commissioner Boyce, Commissioner Carley, President O'Grady. I'm Michael Sanziano. I have the honor of serving as the Franklin County Auditor. Joining me virtually is Nate Shipman, our spe special project coordinator, which means he is the go-to for all things 2023 mass reappraisal, and Trenton Weaver, who works in the Auditor's Office as part of our council. Uh, this uh, resolution is part of the office's ongoing commitments uh, as we undertake the historic a mass reappraisal process across Franklin County in 2023. Uh, our goal and commitment is that we want all property owners to be informed, involved, and supported in understanding the mass reappraisal process, not only uh, the value change, uh, but how they can engage, be involved, uh, and help us in the auditor's office make sure we have fair and accurate, accurate uh, appraised values. Uh, we are seeking to best align our constituent uh, residents' expectations on property values uh, while also having them understand the different points in time and impact uh, valuation increases of the statutory process will have on them. Uh, with that, we look forward to working with the vendor to get the word out uh, and appreciate your all support. Happy to answer any questions you may have. There are no comments or there are no comments or questions. I move to approve resolution 124-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. <coughs> yes. Resolution number 124-23 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Auditor. Thank you. On to the engineer. Mr. President, we have a public hearing. Oh, I apologize. Um, we have a public hearing for resolution 125-23. Can you please read the uh, public hearing into the record? <laughs> Establishing altering and widening of Rings Road, County Road number 33 at Cosgray Road, County Road number 39, Washington Township, Franklin County, Ohio. Viewed engineer to file plans as necessary. Uh, all right, I'd like to open the public hearing for this resolution. Is there anyone here who would like to speak on the public hearing? All right, seeing none, I would like to close the public hearing and have the clerk read the resolution into the record. Resolution number 125-23, establishing altering and widening of Rings Road, County Road number 33 at Cosgray Road, County Road number 39, Washington Township, Franklin County, Ohio, viewed engineer to file plans as necessary. Good morning, commissioners. Nick Sewell, Government Affairs Liaison for County Engineer Cornell Robertson. Um, sorry, we lost our audience. Um, I really thought they wanted to stay for road and bridge projects. Uh, it's disappointing, quite frankly. The uh, commissioners, this resolution uh, <coughs> relates to the uh, Rings Road at Cosgrave Road intersection. This resolution is the second step in the legislative process to determine uh, the nature of the improvement to go forward. As you know, this is in the northwest part of uh, Franklin County uh, near Dublin, and it is a collaborative project with the city of Dublin. And this is an offset intersection, and this resolution will allow the engineer to determine the feasibility of different types of improvements that can be made to make this intersection safer. 
Uh, so pending any questions, we would ask for your approval. Well, um, the, those young folks were much too uh, creative and talented for us. So the rest of us nerds in the room hanging out for the roads and bridges projects. Mm -hmm. Well, that's okay. I do play bass as well, well for what it's go. worth. There you go. <laughs> Not as well as the students here, clearly, but uh, just keep that in mind. <laughs> Future <laughs> events. There are no additional comments or questions. I move for approval of resolution 125-23. <laughs> Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 125-23 has been adopted. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, you all right. We'll move on to uh, the Sheriff's Department. Resolution number 126-23. Resolution authorizing a contract to Galls LLC for Sheriff's Deputy Uniforms and Accessories in the amount of $604,179.90. Good morning, Commissioners and County Administration. Albert Smith, Assistant Finance Director for the Sheriff's Office. Our resolution authorizes a two-year contract with Galls to provide deputy uniforms to new hires, transfers, and for other collective bargaining obligated issuances. Uh, the resolution approval also allows for one optional two-year extension. Uh, the contract was competitively bid, where Galls was determined to be the lowest and the best bidder. Pending any questions, I request your approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of Resolution 126-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 126-23 has been adopted. All Thank right. you, Commissioners. Thank you, Albert. He's really got that facial hair thing going, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, on to, thanks, Albert. On to the Department, the Office of Aging. Resolution number 12723. Resolution authorizing grant agreements with the City of Columbus doing business as Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging and The Ohio State University to provide services and programming that will promote and support access to quality and relevant education for seniors in Franklin County in the amount of $72,082. Good morning, commissioners and county administration. Shonda Wingo, uh, no longer interim, director of Franklin County Office on Aging. All right. <laughs> I was told I'm supposed to say that with my chest. <laughs> um, oh, joining us today, we have our CFO, Larise Cohens, and assistant director, Caroline Rankin. I do have five resolutions for you this morning, so we'll be together for a little while. <laughs> uh, the first resolution, um, um, earlier, well, late last year, one of the uh, things that we did um, to be strategic about our work is align our grant programs as well as our program areas with the, the uh, social determinants of health and the Rise Together blueprint. So under this first resolution that I'm presenting today, um, under the domain of education, access, and quality, um, these two grant-funded pro uh, projects will provide quality assessment um, educational tools to seniors to make informed decisions on topics that impact their daily life. COAAA's Medicare outreach helps seniors navigate the com complicated Medicare enrollment process, sign up eligible seniors for low income subsidy, and choose the optimal Part D prescription program. While the Ohio State University's Extension Center Senior uh, Series program uses fun ways to engage seniors as they learn about pertinent issues like avoiding scams, disposing of prescription medic medicine safely, fall prevention, health literacy, just to name a few. This resolution also supports goal number nine of your Rise Together Blueprint. Um, pending any questions, I respectfully request the approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, I move to approve resolution 127-23. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 127-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 128-23. Resolution authorizing grant agreements with Canal Winchester Human Services, Clintonville <coughs> Beachwold Community Resource Center, St. Stephen's Community House, and Upper Arlington Commission on Aging to provide services and programming that will facilitate and enhance the neighborhood and built environment for seniors in Franklin County in the amount of $331,469. For this, this is also one of the social determinants of health domains, neighborhood and built envi environment. 
Studies in the social determinants of health field clearly have shown the direct impact that neighborhood and built environment has on the residents of a community. The adverse effects of housing instability, lack of viable transportation options, community safety, and adequate infrastructure are manifested in generational poverty in, min in many neighborhoods. The four projects funded under this domain look to counteract some of the adverse effects mentioned above by providing transportation for medical and non-medical appointments that seniors rely on to live as independently as they can, as well as programs such as the Kind Wall, the Vial of Life, et cetera, um, that all address safety concerns to the residents that live alone. This resolution also supports goal number nine of the Rise Together Blueprint, and pending any questions, I respectfully request uh, the passage of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of Resolution 128-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 128-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 129-23. Resolution authorizing a contract agreement with Rama Consulting to administer culture assessment and team development services in the amount of $30,000. Thank you. For the Rama Consulting, um, as many of you are aware, the Office on Aging has had many changes over the years, including preparing for the <coughs> number of seniors that we're anticipating um, Every day, um, a senior in Franklin County turns 60, and we know by 2050, um, there will be more kindergartners than there are uh, seniors. Also, by 2030, all of our baby boomers will be 65, and in two years, Generation X begins to turn 60. So it's important at this time that we address um, some culture assessments within the agency and prepare our team um, for all of these changes as well as preparing for all of the various generations that we need to serve. This resolution supports goal number three of the Rise Together Blueprint and pending any questions, I respectfully request the passage of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of resolution 129-23. Commissioner Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You need to go upstairs. Oh, sorry. Uh, second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Abstain. Resolution number 12923 has been adopted with Commissioner Boyce's noted abstention. Resolution number 13023. Resolution authorizing a grant contract between the Central Ohio Area Aging Agency on Aging and Franklin County Office on Aging for services under the National Family Caregiver Support Program in the amount of $339,486. Thank you. Nationally, 53 million fill the role of an unpaid family caregiver in Ohio. That number is also, is also known as 1.5 million. Caregivers provide hours of care to their parents, spouses, partners, and friends, many who are exhausted physically, emotionally, and financially. Kinship caregivers are also on the rise, caring full-time for minor children who are not with their biological parents. In Ohio, almost 230,000 children under the age of 18 live with their great-grandparents or grandparents or another relative. Only 4,500 of those placements are through approved kinship care placement, such as a public uh, children's services agency. Research suggests that children do better when they are placed with extended family and or grandparents or close family friends instead of foster care. However, caring for children comes with a great cost. The Franklin County Office on Aging has been awarded this grant funding from the Central Ohio Area on Aging, also known as COAAA, who is authorized by the Ohio Department of Aging to administer and distribute these funds under the National Family Caregiver Support Program, um, funded under Title III, 3E of the Older Americans Act of 1965. This grant um, contract will authorize the Franklin County Office on Aging to use this funding to provide services for our unpaid caregivers and our kinship families. Pending, hold on, I'm sorry, I have the Rise Together blow proof, uh, goal. This resolution supports goal number 12 and number 13 of the Rise Together Blueprint. Pending any questions, I respectfully request the passage of this resolution. 
If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of resolution 130-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 130-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 131-23. Resolution approving 48 contracts and one novation agreement for senior adult day services and senior home support services in the amount of $5,500,000. The Franklin County Office on Aging administers the Franklin County Senior Options Program, which is a consumer focused system of care that is funded by the senior services levy. This resolution would provide adult day services and senior home support services such as homemaker, personal care, and respite services for the Franklin County Office on Aging um, in our residents. The term of this contract will be for a period of three years beginning February 1st, 2023 through January 31st of 2026. Um, and the resolution supports goal number five and number nine of the Rise Together Blueprint pending any um, questions, I respectfully ask the, for uh, passage of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of resolution 131-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 131-23 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shonda. Um, <coughs> uh, child support enforcement. Resolution number 132-23. Resolution authorizing a 4D contract with the Franklin County Sheriff's Office in the amount of $403,490.35. Good morning, Commissioners. Director Susan Brown representing the Child Support Enforcement Agency. This resolution authorizes the CSEA to enter into a one-year interagency agreement with the Franklin County Sheriff's Office beginning January 1st, 2023, in an amount not to exceed $403,490.35. The purpose of the contract is to reimburse the Sheriff's Office for expenses associated with the execution of warrants in civil and contempt cases and criminal non-support cases, including activities associated with the extradition and execution of warrants in appropriate civil cases. These warrants typically occur when a resident is not complying with their support order and will not engage with the program despite its use of agency outreach efforts, uh, numerous uh, contact um, initiatives, and use of its administrative remedies. Each unit of service defined as one hour or fraction, fraction of an hour of deputy time will be reimbursed at a rate of $96.99 per hour with a total of 4,160 hours anticipated to be devoted to this contract. Pending any questions, I respectfully request that the resolution be approved. If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of resolution 132-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 132-23 has been adopted. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Good morning, Commissioners and County Administration. D'Amico Weathers, Chief Economic Equity. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I may. Yes, you may. <laughs> You're just so excited. My deepest apologies. I am. It's okay. I am. <laughs> <laughs> resolution number 13323. Resolution authorizing the county administrator to execute an agreement with Columbus Fashion Alliance to support programs and services that will support economic growth and support underrepresentation in the fashion industry in the amount of five hundred thousand dollars. I was completely excited because I believe this resolution aligns greatly to what occurred today at recognizing our youth and the arts. Um, so my apologies again for not uh, following formalities. D'Amico Withers, uh, Chief Economic and Equity Inclusion Officer in the Office of Diversity, <coughs> Equity, and Inclusion. Commissioners, this resolution will grant $500,000 to the Columbus Fashion Alliance. Columbus Fashion Alliance is a fashion-based nonprofit that supports the creation and growth of creative and fashion-based business through multiple facets. Since its founding in late 2019, the Columbus Fashion Alliance has reinvested nearly $1 million in the community through programs and initiatives that are dedicated to adv advancing diversity, equity, and inclusion in the fashion and retail in industry. 
This grant award will give assistance to the Columbus Fashion Alliance to support their efforts to sustain its design and production labs, which accommodate all of its initiatives and programs, as well as the Summer of Fashion, the Summer of Future, a fashion internship program featuring top tier mentorship from local fashion and retail executives of color, experimental learning and career exploration for 150 youth ages 14 to 18, and 200 adults ages 18 and over. Increasing education awareness and minority inclusion in the fashion industry, as well as providing economic growth to the Franklin County community by providing jobs and access to retail. This resolution supports the Rise Together Poverty Blueprint Goal Number Three, increasing access to relevant training for credentials that meet local demand with employer commitments to hire and promote. Johanna Terrell, or Yogi, CEO of Warhol and Wall Street, is here to speak toward the resolution and the county's partnership. Yogi. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, it's still morning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I had a few statements. <laughs> yeah. I had a few statements, but uh, I saw that everybody had a little bit of time, so I'll, I'll let it breathe a little bit. Um, first of all, thank you guys for uh, you know um, giving us this opportunity. I wanted to just tell a quick story about um, the partnership from uh, Franklin County since the beginning of the Columbus Fashion Alliance. Uh, when I was out there, you know, knocking on doors trying to sell the concept of the Columbus Fashion Alliance. Um, I met Alex Barris at a pitch uh, opportunity, and he was the first person to come to me and say, I understand what you're trying to do. I believe in this because I know we need it. Because as he was trying to attract businesses to relocate to Columbus, they asked him, who is the organization that will help us understand how to move a fashion business to Columbus? And so that was the first person who believed in what we wanted to do and gave us a chance. And, uh, the following year, our first year was in 2020. We wanted to open up in 2020, and obviously COVID hit. And when COVID hit, um, we thought we were going to be derailed. And actually, the city and the county actually came to help us um, kind of prove the concept uh, when we had a chance to make masks for the city. And so when the city uh, launched the Mask Equals Kindness campaign, a lot of um, people of color were left out of that opportunity because of the vendor um, the vendor application with the city. And so the county was the first to reach out to us to say, hey, we want to make sure that people of color are represented and have the same opportunity to earn dollars during this hard time. And so we created the Slay Safe program in collaboration with the county. And that was one of our first programs in 2020. And since then, uh, the county has been a strong partner of ours to make sure that we are actually uh, being able to implement and create the impact, especially for people of color in this industry. Columbus being the uh, third largest fashion industry in the country, um, often as it exists here, they hire from the coast because we have lack of pathways for our own individuals into the fashion industry. And so our goal is to change that. And so with your support, we have been working through that, working with our educators here, working with the retailers here to increase those pathways into the fashion industry and create some opportunities uh, for people of color. Um, actually, I'm so glad that Malia was here. You guys met Malia earlier, who uh, is going to Kent State for the fashion program. Um, uh, another funny quick story is I was catching an Uber to the airport, and my driver was like, in mid-drive, he just turns around and goes, hey, you, got, you, you do that fashion stuff, don't you? And at first, I was looking at him crazy, like, who is, who is this guy? Uh, but he knew me, and he was just like, I want to tell you to keep doing what you're doing. He was like, you don't know me, but you know my daughter, Malia. And he said, uh, ever since she was in your summer program, which is the Future of Fashion program, uh, as her art teacher mentioned, she's really good at track, and she was looking at a track scholarship. But since being in our uh, program over the summer, she chose fashion and chose Kent State. So um, it was a really proud moment for me just because you don't know how your work is impacting you know, others, and it impacted her and her family, and her dad had to say something about that. So it was good to see Malia in here getting recognized for her talents and knowing that um, she is going to move forward in her fashion career. So um, we're really excited to join and collaborate with you all again uh, this year. We have a really exciting program that we're going to partner with uh, you know, Franklin County Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. It is called uh, Ready to Work. 
That's with an E too, W E R K. <laughs> Just a little, uh, you know, splash to put on it. But this program really is all about workforce development. Some of the things we've realized is that uh, people of color and entrepreneurs in the fashion industry, they still need support, they need education, they need dollars, they need staff, and then also uh, people of color who want to get into the fashion industry, they need that exposure and education and they need the support. So this program will bring both of those together as we're gonna launch programming that helps them prepare for their path, whether it's entrepreneurship or workforce development, and we're gonna have a marketplace. We've tested the marketplace concept and now we are going to open up a new marketplace and where these two groups will come together. And so the entrepreneurs will be placed in this marketplace and then the workforce readiness uh, participants will be working the marketplace. So they'll do everything from production, merchandising, visual merchandising, and marketing helping these entrepreneurs in a critical time for, for them to get out there and grow. So this is a really dynamic program that is really gonna help launch businesses and create jobs and opportunities, and we look forward to putting dollars directly into the pockets of these participants on a workforce readiness program and getting people to market on entrepreneurship. So I just wanna say thank you for your support uh, <coughs> since day one. And you know, it's only been three years, but we've made a lot of progress, and a lot of that has been impacting people of color, so with your continued partnership, we'll continue to grow this program. Thank you, Yogi. Mm -hmm. And commissioners, in, in um, addition to what Yogi stated, we talked Thursday about um, that continued, continuing our branding, continue our, our, your support and showing that with Columbus and Fashion, Fashion Alliance, so Yogi and I are partnering together, moving forward to ensure that you have opportunities to speak to the youth, opportunities to be able to be involved in the programming and the, the results of what occurs, and that we will have that continued support through our partnership um, to know, so Franklin County knows that their Franklin County Board of Commissioners support um, the Columbus Fashion Alliance and what they are doing to advance fashion, the industry for minorities and youth. And if you don't have any other questions, I respectfully request your approval on this resolution. Administrator Wilson. Thank you, President O'Grady, uh, Commissioner Boyce, uh, Commissioner Crowley. Um, it's great to see you, Yogi. Um, love the work uh, that the Columbus Fashion Alliance is doing. Um, you, I'm, I'm not, I don't have that, that it factor, that cool factor. Uh, you got those that, cool glasses that, that, that you always that you always that you always bring to the table. You always have that following. So I just would, I just be wanting a little bit of that drip to just come on me. Uh, that's falling off of you. But anyway, uh, I have a, a, a ask. I'm hoping that somehow that uh, you can expi inspire some young people to want to become suit designers. Uh, because I do love soups, uh, so I'm, and I'm selfish here to say that we need some we need some young, inspiring tailors uh, to come up uh, in in Franklin County that yeah. want to design soups. We got you covered. We got you covered. There's a, a young black man named Gerard who uh, is a tailor, self-taught, or he got taught by a mentor instead of going to school. But he's one of the coldest tailors I've ever met. I make sure, and he's teaching tailoring at C, uh, CFA. So. I'll make sure we got uh, we got some connects coming for you. All right. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, mm -hmm. President O'Grady. All right. Yeah. Um, if there are no additional uh, comments or questions, I move for approval of Resolution 133-23. Second. Moved and seconded. Voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Abstain. Resolution number 133-23 has been adopted with Commissioner Boyce's noted abstention. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, economic development and planning. Resolution number 13423. Resolution authorizing the assignment and assumption mm -hmm. agreement of the amended and restated community reinvestment area agreement between Franklin County DRCS Rail Site 8 LLC and Columbus Rickenbacker Industrial LLC. Good morning, Commissioner Emmanuel Torres. Assistant Director of Economic Development Planning. This resolution will authorize a CRA or Community Reinvestment Area Assignment and Assumption Agreement between Franklin County, DRCS Rail Site 8 LLC, and Columbus Rickenbacker Industrial LLC for the transfer of real property located in the Canal Boss CRA. In 2006, the Board of Commissioners adopted a resolution to designate the rail campus 
at the Rickenbacker Billable Logistics Park. It's located between Rickenbacker Parkway, Boss, Canal, and London Grove Port Roads. And we designated this as the Canal Boss CRA. In 2017, the Board of Commissioners amended the aforementioned resolution to approve the expansion of the original Canal Boss CRA and add DRCS LLC, the developer, as a party to the agreement. DRCS is a subsidiary of Duke Realty. And as of October of 2022, uh, it was acquired by Prologis Inc. The purpose of this resolution is to assign the benefits and obligations of the amended and restated CRA agreement to Columbus Rickenbacker Industrial LLC, uh, it's the buyer of the property, upon the transfer of roughly 38.7 acres and approximately 592,000 square feet of warehouse facility that was recently developed on the site. Uh, joining us virtually, we have representatives um, from the developer seller side, uh, Ben Strewing, uh, Senior VP and Investment Officer, and Kristen uh, Peterson, Real Estate Council Director. Uh, both of these individuals are from Prologis. Uh, also, their counsel, uh, Scott Science and Christopher uh, Sinefic from Boris. And we also have representatives from the buyer, uh, Senior Managing Directors, Paul Garantes and Clark Crenshaw. And pending any questions, I respectfully request your approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of resolution 134-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 134-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 135-23. Review of petition to annex 0.48 acres, more or less, from Mifflin Township to the City of Columbus. Case number ANX-03-23. Good morning, Commissioners. Director James Shimmer uh, from Economic Development and Planning. Uh, this is a resolution to consider an expedited two annexation of 0.48 acres, more or less, uh, from Mifflin Township to the City of Columbus. Uh, the petition case number was ANX-03-23. Uh, the owners of the property are QSI Properties, LLC. Uh, the agent is William Pisano. Uh, the site is located at 2594 Johnston Road. Uh, it has a uh, parcel identity number of 190-000391. Uh, additionally, commissioners, the total perimeter of the site is approximately 641 feet. Uh, approximately 430 of, uh, feet uh, or 67 percent is contiguous to the city of Columbus. Uh, the applicant has in fact met all statutory requirements outlined in section 709.021 of the Ohio Revised Code and uh, the applicant has uh, provided proof of notification timeline and has provided an ordinance from the city of Columbus that identified that services would be provided once annexation has been approved uh, regarding possible incompatible land uses and zoning buffer. That ordinance number was number 0261-2023 uh, passed uh, by the city of Columbus on February 6th uh, of 2023. Pending any questions, Commissioner, I would ask for your approval of the resolution this morning. If there are no comments or questions, move for approval resolution 135-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 135-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 136-23. Resolution to adjust the boundaries of Montgomery Township, thereby making them conform to the boundaries of the City of Columbus. Case number ANX-04-23. Uh, commissioners, this resolution will allow for the adjustment of boundaries of uh, Montgomery Township uh, and will conform them to the boundaries of the city of Columbus in an area in Blendon Township that was previously annexed to the city. Uh, the petitioning uh, municipality is the city of Columbus. Uh, the site is an area that uh, consists of 23.3 acres more or less, uh, which has been annexed from Blendon Township to the city of Columbus. 
the city of Columbus accepted an expedited one annexation petition on November 14th, 2022, uh, through an ordinance uh, number 2934-2022. Uh, the city of Columbus and Blendon Township then entered into an annexation agreement uh, June 22nd of 2021. Under the terms of that annexation agreement, the area annexed uh, by ordinance number 2934-2022 uh, must be conformed so that the territory annexed to the city of Columbus from Blendon Township is transferred to Montgomery Township. Uh, commissioners, uh, city of Columbus uh, ordinance 2934-2022 authorized the submission of a petition to the Board of County Commissioners of Franklin County requesting that the boundary lines of Montgomery Township be changed uh, to make them conform to the corporate lines of the city of Columbus uh, in an area identified in the ordinance. Uh, the petition has been filed uh, in accordance to section uh, 503 of the Ohio Revised Code uh, and uh, it requires you to act on this petition. Uh, pending any questions, I would ask for your approval of this request. If there are no comments or questions, move for approval of resolution 136-23. Second. Moved and seconded, voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 136-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 137-23. Working agreement between Franklin Soil and Water Conservation District and the Franklin County Board of Commissioners on behalf of Franklin County Economic Development and Planning Department in the amount of $54,000. Uh, commissioners, we uh, are working with a trusted partner uh, and Franklin County's Economic Development and Planning uh, would like to formalize a working agreement with the Franklin Soil and Water Conservation District. The previous 2022 working agreement was passed by the Board of Commissioners uh, by resolution number 0324-2022 for the time period of January 1st, 2022 through December 31st of 2022. Uh, this working agreement will be for this specific working agreement associated with this resolution uh, will be for a time period of January 1st, 2023 uh, through December 31st of 2023 in the amount of $54,000. The agreement is to provide assistance uh, to Franklin County in meeting the Ohio EPA's municipal separate storm sewer systems permit uh, requirements for uh, stormwater management. In addition, uh, Soil and Water Conservation District provides natural resource services uh, to economic development and planning for development proposals uh, and planning activities. Uh, on the call this morning is um, uh, Jennifer Fish uh, from the uh, Soil and Water Conservation District, and I'd ask her if she has any comments she might make. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, commissioners, for your support and work with Franklin County with our work with Franklin County ADP. With your support, we continue to bring additional resources through state matching funds, municipality and township funds, as well as grants and donations to do more conservation in Franklin County. This year, in addition to assisting with lot splits, plan reviews, construction site inspections, and other natural resource support and reviews, we continue to increase our efforts in managing post-construction facilities. These are the facilities that manage and treat stormwater after development is over. With the trend of heavier rainfalls due to climate change, we need to look at every opportunity on public, private, and developing lands to soak in rainwater. We're currently working with OSU Bird Polar Research Center to update precipitation numbers for Franklin County so that we have better data to work with. We also continue to develop new partnerships and opportunities Recently, an OSU graduate student reached out to us to translate educational information from our new Master Rain Gardener program into Chinese. He is working in Wuhan, China, on a sponge, which is a sponge city, to provide more information on rain garden opportunities there. Rain gardens and other green infrastructure practices take rainwater and soak it into our soils rather than letting it run into our streets and rivers, increasing flooding and pollution. We essentially want to make Franklin County and the greater Columbus area a sponge city. Thank you so much for your support of our work to conserve natural resources in Franklin County. Commissioners, do you have any questions for uh, Jennifer? No. If 
not, I would uh, recommend passage of this resolution to you this morning. If there are no comments or questions, move for approval of resolution 137-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 137-23 has been adopted. Thank you, commissioners. Thank Thanks, you. Jim. All right, public facilities management. Resolution number 138-23. Resolution authorizing a contract with Family Tree Landscaping and the Keller Group Limited to provide mowing and landscaping services at designated Franklin County facilities and authorizing an amendment to increase the contract contract with R&S, Hallie and Company Incorporated doing business as Darby Creek Nursery and Landscaping for snow removal services in the amount of $400,000. Good morning, Commissioners. Darla Reardon, Director, Public Facilities Management. Public facilities management is responsible for the facility and property needs of the various agencies and offices of Franklin County. A request for a proposal was issued to solicit proposals for mowing and landscaping services and four proposals were received. This resolution authorizes a contract with Family Tree Landscaping and the Keller Group Limited to provide mowing and landscaping services at designated Franklin County facilities. The term of the contract is for a one-year period with four optional one-year extension periods, and it is a not to exceed contract. Additionally, this resolution authorizes an amendment to increase the contract with RNS Haley and Company Inc. doing business as Darby Creek Nursery and Landscaping, approved with resolution 898-22 in November of 2022, to allow for additional snow removal services due to potential future weather conditions. Pending any questions, PFM respectfully requests your approval of this resolution. Thank you. If there are no comments or questions, move for approval of resolution 138-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 138-23 has been adopted. Thank you, have a great day. Thanks, you too. Thanks, you too. Public facilities management. Uh, purchasing, Mr. President. Oh, I'm sorry. Resolution. <laughs> Purchasing department. Resolution number 139-23. Resolution approving purchases for various Franklin County agencies in the amount of $3,490,371.64. Good morning, Commissioners. Tracy Matthew, Assistant Director of Purchasing. And joining me is Tamika Bumper, Economic Equity Administrator in the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. This resolution requests your approval of 121 purchase orders for which the county auditor has pre-certified available funding. Tamika has a supplier diversity data for this week. Good morning, Tamika. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning, commissioners and county administration. Assistant Director Matthew will ask, is asking for approval of 25 purchase orders with 2% being awarded to small business enterprises and 13% to women business enterprises, and 7% going to minority business enterprises. <clears throat> Once approved, 10 agencies will have provided opportunities for equity and inclusion to small businesses. These agencies include Clerk of Court, Court of Common Pleas, the Data Center, Domestic Relations and Juvenile Court, Engineering, Franklin County Board of Development and Del Disabilities, <laughs> if I could get that out, Office on Aging, Probate Court, Prosecuting, prosecuting attorneys, and the public facilities management. Pending any questions, we request your approval of this resolution. Uh, if there are no comments or questions, move for approval of resolution 139-23. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 139-23 has been adopted. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, the Board of Commissioners. Resolution number 140-23, resolution of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners to convene into executive session for the purpose of considering personnel matters and to confer with the Franklin County Prosecutor's Office concerning pending or imminent litigation. Move to convene into executive session to consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee or official and to confer with an attorney for the public body concerning disputes inv involving the public body that are the subject of pending or imminent court action. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley? 
Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? <coughs> yes. Resolution number 14023 has been adopted to convene into executive session.